All right, everybody, grab your hammer and sickle and a shot of vodka, because we're doing a review on the 9130. Thank you for joining me. This is Brown Coat Nerd. This is my first ever gun review video, so it's probably going to be pretty bad. That's why I've decided to do it on the Mosin Nagant 9130. Um, if you're new to a Mosin Nagant, you think about getting one, and this is the first review video you've come across, please hit stop and go find another one. I promise you there are better review videos. That's why I'm doing it on this gun. This is my first one, so I'm gonna hopefully I'll get all my screw-ups and mess-ups out of the way on this puppy. Um, Mosin Nagant, it's a really good entry-level military surplus rifle if you're thinking about getting into collecting that. Um, it's kind of what got me addicted when I grabbed this guy. The prices are going up though, so that kind of makes it a hard argument for that whole super cheap military surplus gun. Uh, I bought this a few years ago, two, three years ago. Um, it's currently 2017. And I paid 200 bucks. They had, I think, three of these there. They're all priced the same. This was the best looking one. I knew absolutely nothing about them. The other two had a triangle and arrow, whereas this one had a, a star and arrow, which means star arrow means it's built in Tula. Triangle means Ishvija. Me knowing nothing about it, I was like, Russian, star. That makes sense. I'll buy that one. So that's why I ended up with this one. Um... Told my friends that were into guns. I was like, yeah, I got me a Mosin Nagant. I'm a badass. I paid 200 bucks for it. And they all just looked at me like I was smoking crack. They cannot believe I paid 200 bucks for a Mosin Nagant 9130. They're all, dude, I paid 80 for mine. I paid 60 for mine. Um, and I was just kind of like, well, hell, maybe I screwed up. But the simple fact was the prices were going up. I, I never saw them under 200 after that. I think like maybe once or twice online. Um, but man, now some of the prices I've seen are crazy. Like 350, 400. I kid you not, folks. There's one at my gun store. Nothing special. It was an Isvija. Had the round receiver, the electro pencil marks. It was a mismatch. We'll get into that in a second. And the price tag was 450. And I went back about a month later, and that guy was gone. Um, yeah. Maybe there's something on it I missed, but the prices on these are getting a little... A little crazy on the old Mosins. Um, just be clear, I did check this before filming. Yes, it is. It is empty. I'm not a dum-dum. Um, but what this here is... If I can get it focused, which I'm pretty sure I won't be able to, maybe some light will help. What that says is 1940. This is a 1940 Tula. I'm kind of a World War II history nerd, so that was cool to me because Operation Barbarossa was launched in 1941, and that was the Nazi Germany invasion of the Soviet Union. Um, and with this gun being a military refurb, thinking more than likely uh, this gun saw action. Now, to tell if it's a refurb, the easiest way is this little cutout here, which makes it easier to get this band out of the way when you're breaking it down. Um, but all the post-war stocks have this cutout. And most of the guns that are refurb got a brand new stock. Um, so if you see that and your gun was built before uh, 1945, you, you can pretty much bet your gun was refurbished. Another easy way, you'll get these little electro pencil serial numbers all over it. And see down here on the bottom of Magwell where they marked out the original and put in the new one. You can even see there's the Ishvija, excuse me, I pr pronounced that wrong, little logo or whatever you want to call it, mark the triangle there on a Tula barrel. It's been a while since I've had the gun out of the, re uh, the body, but I'm pretty sure the receiver um, is a 1940 Tula as well. They just changed this action, brand new stock, Magwell. Um, and a lot of the stuff that you're going to be getting with the Mosin, usually we'll get a sling. You're going to get one of these beautiful, um, and by beautiful I mean fugly, kind of vinyl faux leather mag pouches. You'll usually get a oiler that's completely covered with Cosmoline. Mine's still in a plastic baggie 
jammed in a drawer somewhere. Yes, you guessed it. I'm filming with one hand. Sorry. It's my first review video. Yeah, we'll just leave it down. Um, so you'll get one of these mag pouches. Also, we usually get a bayonet with it. Which the gun's already flipping long. And then you throw that wicked spike bayonet, which also works great as a flathead screwdriver. Um, it's a gnarly looking gun. This one, the electro pencil serial number does not match what's on the gun. Um, and I tried putting it on there once. And I was pretty sure I was never going to get it off if I did get it on there. So, just left it off. I've done a little bit of Dremel work on it. Um, need to do some more. I'm not too terribly concerned about it. A lot of people say these guns are more accurate with the bayonet on there, that they're sighted in with the bayonet on there. Man, I couldn't tell you if there's a bit of truth to that or not. These guns are pretty accurate um, out of the box, so to say. Uh, they get a little bit of a cult following. Sometimes people get a little carried away with how accurate they are. I know a lot of people like to be like, oh, he's got a Mosin, he's a sniper. Simply because he's shooting a Mosin, he has like some ungodly sniper ability. Um, to that, I'd say let's not get carried away. Yeah, these guns are extremely accurate, especially for the price, 200 You know, once the price is getting a little higher, it's kind of hard to say, you know. Whether it's worth the value, but it's still a very accurate gun for 200. The round is just god awful fun. The uh, 762 by 54 r round, um, it packs a punch. I think it's just a little bit hotter than 308. Um, it's 762 by 54 r for rimmed. It does not stand for Russian, which I'll, you'll see that in a lot of videos. But basically, this case here, the rim sticks out rather than being recessed, and that's all that R means. And as far as I know, no, there's not a 762 by 54 recessed round cartridge. Um, the surplus is drying up. You used to be able to buy spam cans like this or like that for fairly cheap. Those are drying up quite a bit. Um, and before anyone makes fun of the yellow cabinets over there, this is the guest bedroom that has kind of temporarily become my little gun room. Um, so no, I don't have yellow cabinets, so this was for free, guest bedroom, and I'm too lazy to pay him. Uh, but I digress. Um, getting back to the Mosin here. Like I said, it's very accurate. It's plenty powerful. I think I fell in love with this gun mostly for that round. Um, this was my first gun that fired the 90, uh, excuse me, fired the 9130, that fired the 762 by 54 r Um, I now currently have three guns that fire it. And one of them is semi-auto. I will be doing a review on the Vepper later, so do not worry. Um, but it's just fun. It's really hard to say this gun isn't worth 200 maybe 250 if it's in really good shape and like the numbers are matching or something. And I love this gun. I love the cartridge, but it's, it's getting kind of hard to defend um, paying some of the prices uh, on them for what I've been seeing. Not a whole lot of features. It does have a safety back here. I'm not even going to try to. You pull it, and then you twist it, and that's your safety. Um, you got a very basic V-notch sight there. Hooded front post. Front post is not adjustable. I know it's got that opening in there. Um, so you might be thinking, oh, I can stick an AK tool in there. No. Nah. Um, but it's pretty accurate, so you don't really need to do a whole lot. I can't say I've ever have pushed that up to any degree at all. Um, I mean, I, you know, the max I've shot is probably 100 yards. I just leave it down. There's no need to mess with it. Um, what am I missing? Uh, it's just a damn cool gun. If you're a World War II buff, uh, you, you're definitely going to have love for it. Just buy the gun and then start watching World War II movies that involve Russia or Poland or Finland. And it's going to seem like this gun is in every flipping movie ever. Um, you'll see them a bunch. Even in The Walking Dead, although that was the carbine version. There's a lot of different versions of the Mosin they got out there. This is the 9130. This is the most common variation I believe that you're going to see. Um, the Finish made some really good Mosins. We'll get into that in another video. Um, then the Chinese, I think they made a bunch of... I think they only did carbines. I don't think they did these long ones. I don't know if that was an option for them. 
But uh, the cool factor, I believe, is pretty stinking high on it. Um, it's just kind of one of those guns you really can't go wrong with. Like I said, with the price nowadays, it's kind of making it a little more difficult to uh, say that is the deal. But yeah, this is my 9130. Um, plan on bringing you some more videos in the future of guns that just don't have that many reviews on them on YouTube. That's really the plan of this whole channel. Just wanted to do my first video on a real basic gun, though. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, everyone. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for bearing with my one-handed painting camera motions and all my ums and ands and oh yes. Um, Thank you for watching. Uh, have fun shooting and be safe.